Matthew here. I hope everyone's staying safe and warm with the winter storms that are hitting the mid uh, US. I have had the Moto 360 third generation for about a month, month and a half, give or take. So is this watch worth it even a year after it was released? So stay tuned. So I've had multiple smartwatches in the past from let's say the Galaxy Watch Active 2 right here the various fossil watches this is the gen 5 but i've had the gen 4 and the gen 3 as well and then i started off with the apple watch when i had an apple phone and i also had the huawei watch 2 i believe the classic watch 2 and the samsung gear s3 and the samsung galaxy watch as well so i kind of have some experience when it comes to uh, wearables android watches apple watches kind of and your Tizen OS watches like your Galaxy watches. So yeah, we're just gonna dive quickly into this watch, how I like this even a year after it was released and decide if it's worth the $299 price tag. I think that it's also found for $199 when it's on sale most of the time and sometimes it can dip down to $169, $179 as well. So yeah, first off, let's talk about design of this watch. This watch is a great design. I like that uh, Moto 360, even though it's not technically made by Motorola anymore, they've kind of taken the refinements that they had with the 360 Gen 2, and they've made it even better, added some updated specs and all that, but the design was a really good. The main complaint about the Moto 360 second generation was that horrible flat tire design, and uh, the company, did finally come and get rid of that flat tire, tire design. Of course, with that, you do sacrifice some of the bezel. Um, you have to add a little bit of bezel in order to get the sensors all around the screen rather than just at the bottom of the screen. But overall, I'm glad that this watch has an updated design when it comes to the screen. The screen is a 1.2 inch AMOLED display, which is nice. Uh, it's it's a good size. It's not massive, but it's not super small as well. I found that my um, Galaxy Watch Active 2 was slightly small in my opinion, but that could just be me. Uh, this one, it's nice. I like that um, for the design. It has the rotating crown on the top button. So there's two buttons, a top button and a bottom button. The bottom button acts as just a pusher. The top button acts as a rotating crown along with a pusher. Uh, you can um, change the bottom button to navigate it to whatever you want in the settings. I think it is limited to certain settings, but for the most part you can navigate it to different uh, input, all that. So that's really nice that they've got that versus just the one button design on the first generation and the second generation. Um, the watch itself, yes, it looks pretty chunky, but overall, um, it's not bad. I was at first a little skeptical about how chunky it looked, how thick it was, but overall just using it over time, it had honestly doesn't really bother me as much. I know with the Galaxy Watch Active 2 and even the uh, Fossil Gen 5 watch, they were a lot thinner, but they actually felt slightly heavier in on the wrist than this. So yes, it is a little bit chunkier, but the weight isn't too bad. So just keep that in mind when you are trying to figure out about wrist and weight and all that if this watch is going to be too heavy. The size of the casing is I believe a 42 millimeter case so it should be able to fit most wrists, um, men and women. Um, it's a unisex watch. They do have options to kind of make it a little bit more masculine or a little bit more feminine. I do have the phantom black version but there is a silver version as well. Um, and I believe there's a rose gold version or a gold version, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. But overall, this is a great watch when it comes to look and feel. Um, it's, it's nice, it's not too big, not too small, um, and it just looks really nice, and it looks like an actual timepiece rather than like your Fitbits, your Apple Watches. They kind of have that square design, um, which I personally am not a fan of, but with this, it looks like a traditional timepiece. So yeah, I really like that. Okay, so to go with the specs, this has one gigabyte of RAM, 
um, with eight gigabytes of internal storage. Um, I do wish that this had an external speaker, but it does not have a speaker for taking calls or accessing your Google Assistant, sadly. But So you can't take calls or listen to music through this but you can at least have music stored on this device. It uh, packs the Snapdragon Wear 3100. I know right now there is the Snapdragon Wear 4100, but even the 3100 is a great chipset for um, Wear OS, so I haven't had any issues really with that. Um, but overall, this is a great watch uh, for different, I guess, for performance and all that as well. Uh, I would definitely recommend this watch. Uh, this has your typical sensors like your GPS, your NFC for payments, your GLONASS for your GPS as well, um, heart rate monitor, all that. So you can take this for, uh, let's say, to work out. I actually do work out with this watch some, um, and it is very comfortable on the wrist when I do work out. Um, I actually have a, a solo uh, band. It's not really a solo band. It's not like Apple solo band, but it's kind of a solo band that's compatible with Android devices, 20 millimeter, 22 millimeter devices. So I'll go ahead and play, place a link down to this solo band down in the video description below. But it does come with a leather band and a silicone band, and you can kind of mix and match. You can kind of customize that a little bit when you do purchase the watch. It's nice that it comes with two bands rather than just one, like most uh, Wear OS smartwatches or any smartwatches for that matter uh, use have come with just one. So it's nice that this comes with two, but I will place a link down in the video description to uh, this band on Amazon. When it comes to battery, the battery lasts pretty long. It is a good sized battery for this. I believe it's like uh, 360 milliamp hours, which seems Kind of small when you compare it to a phone, but for a watch, it's great. Um, I usually lasts all day, and luckily with the charger, which sadly you can really only get through the Moto 360 website. But with that charger and the fast charging, you can get from zero to 100% in about 60 minutes, which is a great fast charging operating. Uh, I really like that. You can wear it overnight, put this on the charger, go take a shower. When you get done, it should be close to full because obviously it's not gonna run down the battery all the way while you're sleeping. So that's also nice that it will do that with the fast charging. So overall, this watch is great. I will say one of the one issue that I had was at first, I connected this of course to Wear OS, um, the app for my phone, from a Pixel 4 phone, and I did have some issues with connection. It was really weird, like every now and then it would say not connected, it wouldn't connect, but a quick workaround around that to fix it is to just disconnect it um, forget the device on the Wear OS app and then just reinstall and, and re-register the watch on the Wear OS app and then everything will work fine. That's what happened to me and now I haven't had any issues. At first I was like, well shoot, this isn't good. If it's not connecting to my phone, then why do I have this? But after I did that, it finally did connect. But other than that, I haven't had really any issues with this. It works great. The I guess the operating system, the flowiness, I guess you could say the one gigabyte of RAM really helps with that. Overall, I mean, Wear OS is Wear OS and it has some ways to go to compete with, let's say, uh, Apple's Wear OS or even uh, Samsung's Tizen OS. But overall, um, the Google Wear OS has definitely um, gotten better over the years versus how it was back during the, let's say, the Huawei Watch 2. Uh, so yeah, that's also good that um, Google is constantly kind of upgrading and upgrading their watches, at least the Wear OS, to kind of make it more refined, though sometimes it takes a back burner to, you know, let's say, your phone um, operating system updates. But overall, Google does update the watch OS um, interface sometimes, which is nice that they still do that. But I would definitely say for $199, this is a great watch. For $179, this is a great watch. If you see this on Moto 360 website or any other website for $299, I would say don't buy it. It's pretty expensive. But if you see it on sale, on sale for $199 or $179 or something like that, I would say it's definitely worth the price. I've really enjoyed this watch it is great it feels great looks great um if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you want to see more go ahead and subscribe hit that bell icon to be notified when i post another video until then everyone stay safe peace